good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Vermonter and all the canoes on the Connecticut. This is the Vermont State Senate Committee on Institutions. Um, we are going to be talking about a document that will be explained in a moment that is an agreement between three specific parties. And I'll begin by saying I'm Joe Benning. I am your host for today's activities as chair of the Institutions Committee. We also have Senator Ingalls from Essex Orleans, Senator Mazza from Grand Isle, Senator Parent from Franklin County, and I see Senator McCormick is now joining us from Windsor County. Um, by way of a little bit of background, <clears throat> there is a Memorandum of Understanding, otherwise known as an MOU. And by the way, I'm speaking down at the grassroots level just so that anybody who is brand new to this committee or has never been involved in this process before or happens to be watching us on YouTube um, to bring you up to speed. There is a document called a Memorandum of Understanding that has to do with the Capital Complex Security. Specifically, this memorandum of understanding is between BGS, its buildings and general services, uh, the sergeant at arms and the Capitol Police, as well as security for the judiciary uh, in this state. We have, uh, in addition to our uh, normal committee members, we have Representative Scott Campbell joining us. The um, issue is that, send, I'm sorry, Representative Alice Emmons, who chairs the House Committee on Corrections and Institutions, and I happen to serve on the Capital Complex Security Committee, which involves all the particular players in Washington County who may be associated with providing security to the Capitol Complex. This memorandum of understanding is going to be uh, explained by our legislative counsel, Rebecca Wasserman. And uh, I think, Becky, I'm going to leave it at that for the moment and turn it over to you to talk about what is supposed to be there, what's not there right now, and why we need to resolve this and hopefully be done with it by the end of the month. Before you start speaking, I will say to all the players, my intention is to have this resolved before the end of the month. I do not envision it to be a one day discussion. I do anticipate hearing from everybody who wants to, to speak on it and then have uh, Ledge Council working on trying to commit a final draft to all of you for approval. That's where we are. We're still in the beginning stages of learning what this is all about. So with that, Becky, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. Um, so I should, I should start by saying that I have not been involved in the, the negotiation or the, the drafting of it. Um, what I wanted to go through right now with the committee was the statutory requirements surrounding the MOU, as well as um, I, I pulled up some statutes that are just related to the jurisdiction of security within the Capitol complex, because I think that is just helpful um, context for this conversation and why we're, we're sort of having this conversation. Um, so I, I prepared a document that I can share um, if I have, oh, I do have the ability to do so, so I will bring that up now. Um, so are you all able to see that? Yes. Um, okay. I'd enjoy having it bigger. Yeah, I'm trying to, whoop, is that? There you go. That's better good? than me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good for me. Thank you. Um, so this is, so I tried to put in this document the, the provisions that relate to both capital complex security as well as the MOU. Um, and I just highlighted in yellow the ones that specifically deal with the MOU. And you'll see they're actually pretty general. They don't, um, they don't have specifics about what needs to be in the, the provisions of the MOU. Um, but first in uh, Title II, uh, Section 70, this is the statutory section related to the, the role of the Capitol Police Department. So the MOU is actually mentioned under this section of law um, and it, it's about the coordination of ca the Capitol Complex Security. 
So um, it says here that the Capitol Police Department shall provide security within the State House and assist the Commissioner of BGS in providing security and law enforcement services within the Capitol complex pursuant to the MOU. And it cross references the um, provision of law where that uh, requirement for the MOU is provided. Um, and that that cross reference is to um, 29 VSA 171, which is in the sort of BGS um, section title um, uh, for state buildings. And under this section, it's the responsibility for security. So I just wanted um, to, pr to provide, this doesn't all have to do with the MOU, but I wanted the committee to have some context for how the jurisdiction is divided up in the complex. Um, so generally speaking, you'll see in subsection A that the commissioner of BGS has responsibility for security of all state facilities. And then there are um, some exceptions listed in subdivisions one through four. Um, so um, one is, uh, it's clarifying that where there's a state owned or state lease building that house, uh, the house is a court, uh, plus one or more other functions, um, that's under the jurisdiction of BGS. Um, when there's a building which functions, um, this is subdivision two, exclusively as courthouses, that security is under the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Um, the space occupied by the Supreme Court is, is under the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And then in subdivision four, in the state house, security is under the jurisdiction of the Sergeant at Arms. Um, subsection B says that um, BGS has to come up with a security plan for each facility under their jurisdiction, except for those sort of ex exclusions in that list. Um, so the Supreme Court comes up with plans for, for their facilities and the Sergeant at Arms um, for the State House, but they all are supposed to work together to, to come up with these security plans for the, the facilities. And then moving on to page two, this is um, in that same section of, of law about responsibility for security. Um, this highlighted language is what specifically lays out the requirement for the MOU. So this says that um, the commissioner of BGS, the sergeant at arms and the court administrator shall execute a, an MOU to coordinate the provision of security plans and law enforcement services within the capital complex um, and that MOU shall incorporate any existing agreements related to the provision of law enforcement services or security in the capital complex. And then there is a definition of the capital complex, which I've included below. So it's, it's pretty general, except to explicitly say that it has to incorporate any existing agreements um, related to law enforcement or security in the complex. Becky, can I stop you here for a second? Sure. The actual definition of capital complex has a, um, a definition of the actual boundary lines. I'm not looking at a Montpelier map. Am I safe I, in assuming? I actually, I put oh, one here. Very good, thank you. <laughs> um, to try to, uh, so there's a yellow line here that doesn't, that's not actually part of it. But um, uh, so I think it, it starts at, Let's see, the uh, juncture of Taylor Street. Um, sorry, did you have a specific question about? Well, I just wanted to make sure that both Aiken Avenue and um, forgotten the other side. Yeah, is that Bailey Avenue? That that could be. So I, I, think, I had understood I'm Taylor. Sure this is. Bailey, although maybe someone can correct me on that. Okay, so from the bottom of the picture, the river is one border, as I understand it. That's right. And the, um, that looks like Bailey Avenue that's partly in yellow. Yeah. This and how Bailey. far up does that go? I believe it goes up to here to Terrace Street. Okay. So we're now up behind the actual state house. Right. And on the other side, we have, I can't read the, the writing. 
Um, so this is Court Street here. Uh, it's it's not the greatest map, but it was the, I think it's the one that is um, attached to the commission website. So uh, let's see. It says that crossing State Street and continuing um, on the extension of Taylor Street, crossing Court Street at an angle to the westerly line of Greenwood Terrace. So um, I'm not sure where that angle is, but here is Court Street. And do we know where Greenwood Terrace is? I think it might be this area, but I don't know if anyone at BGS can uh, pipe in. Mr. Chair, I have a, I have a map if you'd like to see it. it. Looks a little different. I'd, I'd be happy to, Matt, when you get there. I'm just trying to get okay. a, a general idea, and I don't know how difficult it will be to cross what Becky's now got on the screen with whatever you were able to bring up at the same time. So I, I think I want to take this one step at a time. The idea behind uh, my question here, Beck, is that the southern border is the river. Mm -hmm. The northern border is apparently some distance behind the state house. That's right. But it does incorporate, um, incorporate 109 State Street, which is the pavilion building. Yeah, um, over here on the one side and then all, all the way up Bailey Avenue on the other side, which it would include Baldwin Street and the buildings thereon. That's right. Um, okay, so we have a general idea of where we are. Okay. Um, and then uh, section 172 um, was the only other provision I wanted to go over, which says that uh, for specific to the capital complex security. So it says that commissioner of BGS is responsible for all security operations pertaining to the lands and structures within the Capitol complex, except the interiors uh, of the state house and the space occupied by the Supreme Court. So I'm gonna stop you again and say that I have Title 29, Section 171 in front of me. Subsection C reads, that the Commissioner of Buildings and General Services may delegate the responsibility for security to specified or at specified facilities. Do you take that to mean inside buildings as opposed to the front lawn of the State House? Um, so I, I think that that is, oh, I think that the lands um, I have to pull, I have to read that section, but it seems like in the section of law that they're um, making a distinction between lands sort of outside versus within a facility. Um, so I don't, I don't know if the intent there was to uh, allow for that, but I think the MOU specifically with the, the sort of lands and structures in the capital complex is meant to address that where BGS can um, coordinate responsibility. I have a similar reading. I'm just a little curious as to how the MOU ceded BGS's responsibility by stepping one step further than what the statute actually says. And I'm, I'm thinking that's probably something we're gonna to need to try to clear up at least with the players to the MOU to make sure everybody's on the same page whether it needs a statutory fix, I guess we can also talk about. So I don't think it's ceding their, their responsibility because the MOU is, is specifically just about coordinating security. It is not, it is not delegating responsibility. So there's a difference between those two words. Okay. I mean, that being said, I, I think uh, the, the folks in law enforcement <laughs> on this, in this meeting can, can speak better to how they, coor you know, coordination might involve um, having, you know, one 
entity take over in certain search situations and that could be part of an agreement but i don't know that under the statutory language that it's it's necessarily delegating full responsibility for security in the mou well when i was reading the um, current memorandum of understanding under the term jurisdiction says the commissioner hereby conveys upon the sergeant at arms and capitol police the authority to act in his or her stead to enforce any rule, regulation, or guideline promulgated by the commissioner for using the outside land and grounds of the state house. Um, I understand that is the intent. I'm just questioning whether given the statutory definition that technically steps a little bit beyond what the statute says. I know that's the subject of conversation and where people need to be eventually resolving this issue. I just want to make sure that the statutes are in line with allowing that to happen. Um, I think that that is an area that can be um, clarified in the statute if the MOU is meant to be more delegating authority um, than then that subsection F could be clarified to, to provide for that. Okay. Carry on. Um, well, that's all I had for the statutory provisions. Um, Did you want to introduce us to the MOU? Um, so, like I mentioned, I, I've actually not been as involved with that. So I think maybe BGS or um, or Janet or uh, the chief, sorry, the sergeant at arms or chief Romy, I might be uh, the better the better folks to to speak to it. Okay, I'll pitch out this question, and anybody who wants to can let me know. But I'm trying to rebuild this from scratch. At some point somebody was uh, given the task of drafting an initial MOU. Uh, and the current one is dated from 2016. The statute, as I understand it, requires that it be updated every two years. Um, that's my understanding of the statute. And Becky, I'm gonna have to rely upon you for the statutory interpretation. Um, if I am wrong in that understanding, do let me know. Um, so the statutory language doesn't include that two-year update. It just has that they execute an MOU. Okay. Um, um, my, my recollection, this is going back a little bit, was that this was, there was an MOU that was in place and it had not been updated in a long time. So the motivation for the, uh, sorry, the 2015 or 2016 revision was to sort of address the fact that it that it had been a really long time since um, it had been looked at. And that I, I recall that the MOU that was in place was just maybe like one or two sentences previously. <laughs> so it wasn't very um, helpful for uh, figuring out how to proceed in, in, on who had responsibility for what situations. Just so that everybody is on the same page, I have a document in my hand that's called a memorandum of understanding between the three entities, which claims to have been updated in March of 2016. Uh, I'm sorry, updated in November of 2016. Is that everybody's understanding of the document that is currently in play? Anybody disagree with that? I see a lot of shaking heads yes, so I'm going to assume that is the case. Um, I also understand that a document was prepared as a proposed redraft or update um, that was discussed in September of last year and that the parties walked away from that conversation with an understanding that that's what would happen. I am sensing that at some point, at least one party decided that was not 
enough or correct or whatever the case may be, and another proposal was made. I'd like to get to the bottom of what changes are being proposed and who is responsible for drafting the document. Um, and I don't know who drafted the original document. Does anybody know that? Not seeing any positive. Okay, Matt. The Senator, Senator Benning, the best I could tell, there's a. Matt, you probably ought to identify yourself oh, first. I'm sorry. Um, Matthew Romia, Chief of Police, Capitol Police Department. Um, there is a, a previous MOU from 2000 that was. It was only between BGS and the Sergeant at Arms that um, has looked structurally very similar. Um, I do not know if there was an intervening document in those uh, 18, 16 years, but it looks substantially similar or at least structurally similar. Um, and I, I don't know, Janet or, or Commissioner Fitch might might have some knowledge about what happened in those intervening, that intervening time. Jennifer, if you could start by introducing yourself, please. First, can you hear me? Cause my computer has a hard time with sound. Yes. Okay, so my name is Jennifer Fitch and I am the BGS commissioner. I can speak to um, the 2000 MOU and the 2016 MOU and where we stand today. So everything that Becky said was correct. There is something in statute that indicates that we will develop an, an MOU, BGS, between the Sergeant of Arms, as well as the judicial branch, specifically the court administrator. And the last update on that MOU was in 2016. The two years that you're referencing, Senator Benning, is the within the MOU, it says that it will be evaluated biannually. And so that's where the two years is coming from. Inside the current MOU, it basically states that, you know, we're going to coordinate our efforts together, um, all three branches, the legislative branch or the people that I mentioned, um, and then we're going to coordinate our efforts. And basically, I'm not delegating my authority, but I can, I can request assistance from the sergeant at arms um, to help basically enforce the rules in which they're re referencing mostly the state facility rules that have been established by the commissioner of BGS. And so um, things like request to use state facilities, there's a bunch of state facility rules that applies to that process. So for example, I could call on the Sergeant of Arms and say, hey, Sergeant of Arms, I could really use your assistance in this particular matter on the state house lawn. And the, she could come and say, we'll help you, or she could come and say, we're not, but it does say, you know, we'll assist um, the BGS commissioner. And then in terms of the judicial branch, it's really speaking to uh, the Supreme Court at 109 and that basically they have authority inside the Supreme Court, which, which they do. So again, it just reinforces what already exists in statute. In terms of the starts and stops on um, revising or evaluating the current MOU, which is the 2016 MOU, there was an attempt, um, Paul McManus, who was the prior director of uh, state safety and security for BGS made an attempt in 2017. Um, unfortunately, due to health issues, um, he could no longer fulfill his job duties at BGS. We had another interim director, which was only with us for about nine months. And then uh, Bill McSalis joined us recently. He made an, another attempt to draft an MOU. Unfortunately, I don't think that he had all the assistance that he should have been given to, to try to make that happen. My understanding in speaking with Bill is that he shared it with um, the Capitol Police, Chief Romei. Chief Romei had some things that he wanted to revise. Uh, Bill then sent it to the Commissioner Cole at the time of BGS in December. Uh, Chris was not able to, to get to that, unfortunately. We have a lot of priorities going on within BGS and then the pandemic hit. So uh, Janet and I have had multiple conversations about the MOU. We have both agreed and committed to, to redrafting an MOU, which further clarifies the roles and responsibilities. And I would add that in addition to the Sergeant at Arms and the Judicial Branch, that we should also pull in Vermont State Police because they also plan and respond to events on the State House lawn, as well as Capitol Police 
I do have to look more into um, statute in terms of whether or not we can include the Capitol Police inside of an MOU with the state that I'm not sure about, but if we can't do it inside the MOU, there's other vehicles that we could use. But really, if we're going to go back and readdress the MOU, I think it's important to have everybody that, again, plans and responds to events that necessitate law enforcement to be included within the MOU. Um, and so I'm committed. I really wanna do that great work. As you know, Senator Benning, uh, BGS is one busy department. We have our normal operations. We're dealing with the pandemic and because we do so much in terms of supporting state government, um, much, of my, much of my resources are pulled into that, which includes uh, Bill shop in the Office of Safety and Security. And, um, and then we also have the legislative session that's ongoing as well. So I'm fully committed. I've been fully committed. Janet and I have had multiple conversations on that. And um, I would like to work on that MOU. I'd like to pull in all the players, but I'd also like to be able to do it at a time where we can have dedicated time and attention to really focus and make sure that this MOU really represents all the roles and responsibilities and get everybody around the table um, to coordinate that together in a collaborative manner in which is best for providing safety and security to Vermonters and everybody else that comes to enjoy the State House lawn. So I appreciate that explanation. Um, there's a couple of things. One is that the statute definitely limits the parties to the MOU. And as I'm reading subsection F of 29 BSA section 171, um, it specifically directs BGS, the Sergeant at Arms and the court administrator to be the parties in this MOU. I don't know if anybody has any objection to another entity being brought in. If so, please speak your piece now. But whatever entity is brought in really ought to be um, placed in the statute as well. So it's all coordinated. That's where we're going to end up coming into the picture. Um, and Becky, I guess the first request I would have of you is that if we can at least get an understanding of who the parties are going to be, we can move on a bill to have that happen. So let me ask the question, is there anybody that objects to the state police being brought into the discussion? And I'm looking to Janet, Jennifer, and uh, Robert, Shell, you're also in that but Janet, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Janet Miller, Sergeant at Arms here at the State House. Um, I, I don't wanna minimize the state police's role and all the help that they give to us, but I think the MOU already addresses the three branches of government as far as the court administrator and the buildings and general services. And as Jennifer was saying, we have talked about uh, updating the MOU and unfortunately or unfortunately, Jennifer wasn't the actual commissioner to about three weeks ago or so. So now that's all uh, a good step forward into finishing the MOU. I think uh, we have to consider all the uh, police entities are here and I'm not an expert on this, but I think we all have people working for us that are actually doing the work. And those are the people initially who had been out there in the front working together on how this is actually going to work with security versus law enforcement versus the mutual aid agreement that is out there for police in Washington County. And I, excuse my ignorance, but I'm not sure if the, is the state police as part of the mutual aid agreement. That would be a question that I would have. But I also think that when we kind of punted a little bit to the chief and um, Bill McSallis and also Rob Shell. The reason we did that, or the reason it was in my mind why it did it, is because they're the actually people that are coordinating this in the law enforcement. I'm not saying I didn't have a big, bigger part in it, because I do, and I uh, go step by step with it after it's explained to me, but uh, those are just some points I'd like to make. Um, do I hear you correctly, Janet, that you don't want to add the state police? Not necessarily, but I also I also think they're represented through the administration and whenever they think that it's uh, relevant that they should be part of the discussion or part of the planning. Does that make sense? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm trying to swallow all of this and make sense of it. Um, so Jennifer, you had your hand up. I'm curious. I can't hear you for some reason. I don't know why. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to have um, the Agency of Digital Services fix my computer, so I apologize. Um, I, I consider myself to be the new kid on the block. And um, what I can just recall to you, Senator Benning, is that I had the opportunity to sit in on unified command planning meetings for the most recent um, security planning event, which involved sort of that week around the presidential inauguration. As I'm sure many people uh, are aware, there were threats against state houses across the country during that week. So obviously this rose to unified command. I will tell you as an outside observer looking in, um, I thought it was coordinated really, really well. I thought everybody worked really, really well together. Um, but when we do unified command, VSP takes the lead in unified command. And so I do think that in my personal opinion, whether they come become represented through BGS and they get to sit around the table and they get to be added to the MOU because they're coming through um, to support the BGS commissioner or whether or not they're laid out in statute as being one of the members of this MOU, I do think that they should be reflected in this MOU because they do play a really important role. Even when we had the event at 133, right, that was an umbrella that somebody thought was a long gun, VSP also responded to that event as well. So VSP is a big partner for us. And if we need them for additional support on the state house lawn, we give them a call and they, and they come to our aid. So I just, I guess my piece of the MOU is I believe everybody that plays a role in providing support and enforcement on the state house lawn should be represented because that's how we clarify roles and responsibilities. And if there's one place where you wanna make sure that roles and responsibilities are super clear, it's during an emergency event, right? When things aren't clear, things get confusing and bad things can happen as a result. So all I'm saying is I think it's important that we have all the partners that do respond to the state house lawn as part of the MOU and that we clearly define all roles and responsibilities. So I see Robert Chell's hand up. And before I turn to you, Robert, I'm going to ask Jennifer, um, is Vermont State Police under your jurisdiction in this case? I'm going to look to Becky because that's a legal question. I don't think that they are because they're, they're a different agency. But I, I don't want to speak to that because I don't know for sure. But I don't think so. Do you know the answer to that, Becky? Sorry, if they're included in if, that. If Vermont State Police is under the jurisdiction of BGS in this case. No, I mean, I think my understanding was that the connection with the state police would, would be through a, an aid agreement, but BGS is, I, I don't think BGS goes to them Anyway, they're not they're not in statute as the ones providing security for buildings that are under the jurisdiction of BGS. Okay, uh, Major Whitcomb, I'm going to ask you to kick in in a moment, but I want to switch over to Robert Shell for just a second. Um, Robert, first, please introduce yourself, if you would. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Robert Shell. I'm the Director of Safety and Security for the Vermont Judiciary. I'm desperately looking for somebody who's been involved in this conversation long enough to be able to tell me how it all started and how we ended up with three players, as opposed to all of Washington County's law enforcement wrapped up in this MOU discussion. Yeah, it is a good question. And there's really two reasonable answers to it. Um, one is just, I should speak about the judicial needs as part of this MOU quickly. And uh, again, we have essentially a courthouse in the complex and we provide courthouse level security within the inside of that building. And we are, and I, have, I typically say we are uh, consumers of security when it's outside the building. So we are dependent on external security support. Uh, and we do on occasion, certainly not now, um, request um, the Capitol Police to come down when we have escalated people on the first and second floors, which is not common, but it's also not un, un, uncommon. So um, our role uh, as a, the court administrator requests is that um, we, we, our purview is within the building uh, as part of the MOU agreement. The, my history here is a, an interesting one in that I, 
I came over from public safety after 17 years uh, in emergency management and homeland security. Uh, and I worked with uh, Janet and uh, many of our routine team players in, in multiple uh, events surrounding, uh, planning events around the Capitol complex. Um, and as part of that unified uh, command discussion, um, there, there are two ways to look at that. And, and unified command really is an operational response classification. So in Vermont, uh, we're a rural state, we have limited resources everywhere. On a given business day, uh, we don't have enough routine resources to respond to a flash event that occurs at the state capitol without bringing in many, many resources. And I know Chief Pete worked uh, exhaustively at Montpelier to bring in mutual aid resources as far as Orleans and others um, over the course of uh, that first week in January. So the, the operational needs of, of the complex um, in terms of a unified command is something that's established near or during the time of the incident where any number of resources from uh, state, local, county uh, respond to an incident uh, and approach uh, the event. Um, we had multiple meetings for, for quite a few years on state of the state, uh, state of the budget, uh, and other uh, events that have occurred that where we're able to script um, incident action plans, which is the support document for unified command. Uh, and all the players have played well for years. Um, it's a, a seamless, you know, there's nothing ever seamless, but uh, everyone is coming to the table um, with the same mission uh, and sub same um, support direction um, that we need to support, you know, a capital incident. Has anything bad occurred? No. Uh, maybe we, it's due to our planning that pointed out to uh, the public that, you know, we were, were safe and secure in the capital complex area. So that element of, of the unified approach is something that's generated as part of an operational response. In terms of the MOU, uh, I think we, we need to just make sure our rules are clear. Um, the existing one meets those needs. The reality is if a big event is planned, shows up or is a, is a flash event, the amount of resources are gonna be drawn from everywhere. So there's not going to be a way that we can um, certainly list or incorporate into a specific agreement everyone's role uh, as it pertains to the complex. So, um, but the important messages are is that the current operational response works well um, and it, it's a very much unified command approach um, and I, I think we just need to address the 2021 issues that are now before us that have, have dramatically changed the landscape, um, you know, in the years that I've uh, been in law enforcement, emergency response, and everything else. So um, any questions I can ask at any time, uh, you know, certainly let me know. So as I initially read through these documents, um, I had a general understanding that the sergeant at arms was responsible for what went on inside the state house, that you were responsible for what went on inside the courthouse building. Uh, BGS has a general overall umbrella responsibility, but I didn't see BGS as being responsible for people to people confrontation. And I thought that that from what I had read that BGS had basically delegated that authority to the Sergeant at Arms, in your case, uh, the Judicial Security Branch. Um, and I'm trying to wrap my head around the fact that we've now got a, as I understand it, a Washington County law enforcement understanding um, that in any given occasion, various law enforcement agencies could come running. Um, and I'll use the front lawn of your courthouse as a classic example. If there is some kind of an incident out on the lawn in front of your courthouse, who would normally be responsible for responding to that event? In the events over the summer, for example, where we had um, resident populations uh, living on uh, the complex area, um, we would utilize uh, the Montpelier police we utilize the Capitol Police um, for those small um, incident responses. And those could be during the business day or over the weekend. 
um, that would be the typical municipal response. One thought on the mutual aid uh, agreement is that that agreement is, a, is just a resource structure that can be initiated and pointed at anything. So if a train derailed, if a plane crashes, if there's you know public discord in anywhere in the county, that's I believe how that that applies. Chief Romney, I think, can speak to that um, much more effectively than I can. So, um, and then the role of uh, BGS on the on the complex grounds. Uh, the commissioner um, is certainly you know the, the primary source on that to, to best understand. So somewhere along the way before I became a state senator, somebody decided that three entities needed to be part of an MOU. I don't know if anybody has any understanding why it was limited to those three parties. Perhaps Senator Mazza, if he's, uh, he was back in 1999, I think he was a state senator. I don't know if he recalls anything about this conversation. No, no, no I don't. I know they've talked about the complex many times, but I don't know the details about how that all, you know. Well, if we're going to be trying to work together to resolve this question, it seems to me we all, be on, all ought to be on the same plane as to who the parties should be, because we're gonna to have to adjust the statute to accommodate that. Um, I guess, Major, I'm gonna bring it over to you and Chief Pete, don't think you're getting out from under this conversation. I think we're gonna have a great time with you being introduced. <laughs> Major, uh, I'm sorry, I have a, a committee member who's raised his hand. Senator McCormick. You're Just <clears throat> something I'm going to want to know eventually, and maybe it might come out in, in the pending testimony, which is, is there always clarity as to who is the top dog? Who is in charge? And who is answering to whom? In particular, in hot spot emergencies. You don't want some doubt about that. That's just too many, you know, the too many cooks spoil the broth. So however many people are involved, who's in charge? And if, if that comes out in the testimony, that'll be good. Yeah, I, I see Janet raising her hand. I see Chief Pete nodding his head. Um, as a defense attorney of 37 years, let me say I've been very impressed with how you guys actually all play in the sandbox at just the right time. But the uniform uh, command structure seems to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the highest ranking officer at any given moment is usually the one who is placed in charge. Um, and I'm perfectly happy to stay out of that conversation altogether, but it seems to me if you're going to have an MOU, you really ought to have some kind of language that reflects that uh, chain of command, so to speak. And so I, I appreciate your question, Dick. I think we were identifying some things that are going to require a little bit of tweaking here, both well, on Mr. the statute Chairman, and the MOU. Mr. Chairman, you and I share having been rock and roll musicians at one time. And we have all dealt with bands where the drummer thinks he's running the band. <laughs> yeah, until the lead singer walks out. Uh, Becky. So I think I think the language and statute is trying to address um, what is in the, the mutual aid agreements by saying that it's it's going to um, incorporate existing agreements related to the provision of law enforcement services. So I think that was um, sort of a, a nod to those agreements in place and that command structure of how that is normally done. It's just not um, as explicit in the statutory language. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, I would like to have two things accomplished. One is that we figure out who the parties are supposed to be in this MOU. And the other is we have some understanding on who's going to be drafting initial language so that we're not having uh, drafters at cross purposes. Um, Jennifer, before I turn to Major Whitcomb, I just have a question uh, and maybe it's for Bill McSalis too. When I read Bill's uh, proposal and this is dated 
January 28th of 2020, I saw in capital letters something called State Safety and Security. Is there such an entity that exists? Because it doesn't appear anywhere else other than in that letter. And I don't know whether there was an intention to create such an entity. No, can you hear me? I yes. just wanna make sure, okay, you can hear me, thanks, sorry. Um, a couple of things. Um, so the Office of State Safety and Security is an office that falls underneath buildings and general services. So really, um, and remember, and this is an excuse, but Bill was new in his role when he was asked to draft that, right? So really this is an MOU between BGS and specifically the commissioner of BGS, right? Between that, the Sergeant of Arms and the court administrator. That's specifically what is outlined um, in the 2016 MOU. And I believe what's also outlined in statute in terms of the MOU. In terms of whose responsibility it is to draft the MOU, I would say it likely falls under BGS because again, the, the state house grounds and all grounds, right? And buildings that fall underneath my jurisdiction are my responsibility, both for operations and maintenance and also safety and security. So um, I'm certainly welcome to, to having assistance. And if, if assistance is being provided, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, but I do think that jurisdictionally, again, the state house lawn falls underneath BGS, just like all grounds do. And just to clarify, I believe one of the reasons why it falls underneath us is because we are responsible for mowing the lawn, shoveling the walks, Looks salting, like taking care of all the gardens and the trees. So there's a lot more than just safety and security um, that goes along with grounds, right? And then we also have the request to use state facilities process as well. So <clears throat> a couple of things, I don't know who does your drafting uh, but one of the things that's going to have to dovetail off of your drafting is our changing of the statute to reflect who's going to be in this document. And I don't know whether whoever does your drafting has ever coordinated with our legislative council before. I think we can give Becky direction to coordinate with whoever is on your end, but I don't know how that works in reverse. So I, I'm going to suggest, Becky, if you're willing to do that, and you tell me if you can't, um, I would suggest that whoever is involved in BGS drafting um, coordinate with you in order for us to make sure both the statute and the MOU are lined up with each other. Uh, Jennifer, I have two questions for you. One, is there a difference in an MOU between planning for an event and reacting to an event that wasn't planned for. Because I That's see BGS's role in the first case being pretty understandable. The second case, I'm not as comfortable with. That is an excellent question, uh, Senator Benning, and you are right. There's both planned and unplanned events. And uh, to Janet Miller's point, and I agree with her, you can't, you can't plan for every single event inside of an MOU. And I, I completely understand and support her on that. I do think, however, that you can plan at a high level in terms of how it's going to be implemented at the time. So whether it's planned or unplanned, I think we can address both of those inside the MOU. And to your point earlier, when we talked about unified command, and again, I go back to the 133 incident, to your point, it is in many ways sort of who is the highest level of authority at the time of the incident. Um, and so, so you are correct that we can't address everything within an MOU, but I do think at a high level, we can address both planned and unplanned events in general terms. And then to your point, in the current MOU, it talks about us coordinating, right? Coordinating communication, coordinating safety plans. And I think that in my mind, um, that's another area that we could improve upon even outside of the MOU, being more proactive with all the different parties that respond to the state house lawn throughout the year, whether we're doing um, a tabletop exercise or something else, again, to make sure that whatever we have uh, planned for, right, when we, when we try to implement it, how does it work? And then do an after action review and how can we improve upon it? So I think there's work to both be done within the MOU, but I also think there's work to be done outside the MOU as well. Okay, so my second question to you, and I think it's already been answered, but this um, entity called State Safety and Security is not something that should be classified as a party in the MOU. It should be uh, the BGS commissioner. Okay. Major Whitcomb, I'd like to hear your opinion about the state police becoming involved in an MOU of this type. 
Well, thank you for having me, uh, Major Jim Whitcomb, State Police. Um, I think it, for, for us, it's a reflection on our, on our past involvement with our partners here. Um, these are positive experiences for the Vermont State Police. Uh, we are certainly, um, we're blessed with having a good relationship with everyone involved in response. Um, and they're all here on the call. So um, we do see ourselves as uh, being available with specialized units and personnel and expertise to come in and be part of a mutual aid response. Um, and what that looks like uh, can be anything from a small response pre-planned for something uh, that we know about, which requires maybe a, uh, our bomb squad to come in and do a review or a canine review of an area, all the way up to a, a major incident response um, that is reactive. Um, and we're, we do both. And we've also uh, been involved in planning for response like we did last month. So um, for us, uh, this has worked because of the, the partnerships that have been develop, developed over time. Um, you're gonna put me on a spot, I think, to ask whether or not we should be involved in the MOU. Um, let, let me just say that this is only the first day of this conversation. So if you feel like you need to reflect on that a while or talk to other folks that might be over you, perhaps you that go. might be a, a, a good opportunity to say, you don't need to answer that question now, but I definitely would keep that in mind for the next conversation. I appreciate that time. Um, I do think that uh, it's important for me to, to highlight that the team works. Um, right. And, and uh, I, I imagine that Montpelier Police Department also will have um, some comments on that also. Who I was going to turn to next, Chief Pete. I don't know if you've ever actually testified in a committee before, um, but welcome. And um, you've been listening all this time, so I assume you have some thoughts about whether the Montpelier Police Department should be involved in this MOU conversation or not. Uh, well, good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Pete. I'm uh, with the Montpelier Police Department. Uh, I just would just echo that, uh, you know, again, with, with, in regards to re reactive and proactive or, or, or ops planning. Um, Montpelier Police is going to be there um, anytime called. Uh, uh, there, there are a lot of other intricacies in this. Like, for example, we share the same radios with, you know, we dispatch for the Capitol Police Department. We have a very good relationship with Bill McSallis, with uh, Major Whitcomb, with um, uh, Rob Schnell. Uh, so we're going to come be there anytime necessary. Um, so, uh, you know, the only thing I would just say is just whatever the clearly defined roles are going to be, um, it they are what they are. I, I have no interest of, of uh, of basically my only interest is just the safety and the security of the complex, the people, the city. I don't have to be in charge of it. I just have to, I just need to know uh, what, what parameters that, that, that folks want us to operate in based on who's gonna be responsible for what. If you became involved in an MOU, would that be something that you would have to clear with the town authorities to allow that uh, your participation and signature on that document? I, I would definitely uh, go back to, uh, to uh, my boss, Bill Frazier. Um, and then however, he, he's going to communicate those issues with uh, the, the, the city itself, because then it also could boil down to issues of liability concern. So um, again, in, in emergency situations, we all come, but when we're looking at issues that, that may involve liability or responsibility or injuries or those, those things, uh, we, have to, we have to make sure that we have those, those clearly defined roles. But yes, we're, we're uh, uh, Bill Frazier is going to, you know, very supportive and, and we're ready to go. Um, I'll ask both you and Major Wickham, in the event that something happens on the Capitol grounds and a phone call is made to one or both of your offices and a sergeant from each of your departments shows up on scene and is the highest ranking officer, who takes charge of the conversation from that point? Chief, if you have, uh, you want to go ahead? 
I think it's just based on the based on the scene and the and the understanding of who was first there and what type of resources are being used. So from the most part, it, it you know, it's a very uncomfortable answer. It's not fair, but it it's it depends, and um, whose resources, the area, uh, you know, it, are we looking at a consolidated? So if it's if we're responding to a to an ongoing incident, then it's going to be. A collaboration is going to be who's ever calling the shots at that particular incident because somebody may there may be uh, uh, somebody from state police that was first to arrive on the scene and has more information and they can make the more decisive decisions as to who needs to go where how we're going to surround or contain the incident who's going to go in to deal with it if it's an active shooter say um, but then as time continues on if the scene still goes that's when the brass quote unquote shows up to screw everything up and so, so that's where we need to make sure that, you know, when, when we talk about unified command, who is going to, we're looking at the allocation of resources and the collaboration. So that unified command is what resources do we have available? Have we thought of this? Have we thought of that? I think we're all in agreement. This is what we should do next. That's when we have the luxury to make those decisions. So commissioner, this is part of my thought process. Um, I am sure that if an incident happened on the state house grounds and a sergeant from the Montpelier police and a sergeant from the state police showed up at the same time, that someone from your office would not try to supersede their activity at that point. So I'm, I'm kind of seeing a difference between a planned operation. In other words, where pre-planning takes place for a given event and command and control of that kind of a conversation versus command and control over a, an emergency situation. And I'm only making that distinction because it's possible we want to divide those two issues in an MOU. Um, I'm just rolling that through my head and asking you to think about that going forward. We are going to come back and have more of this uh, conversation. Janet, you've been listening for a while. I'm anxious to hear where your thoughts are at this point. Um, well, thank you, Senator Benning. I, for the, the uh, six years that I've been Sergeant at Arms, the same subject comes up over and over again about who's in charge in an incident command. And through the Capitol Complex Security Group for lay people as myself who aren't involved in law enforcement, who aren't uh, initially a part of an incident command, it does work. And I, I don't think egos really get in the way when everyone's working together because if this, if uh, Chief Romeo starts it and then the tactical team is called in, then of course, you know, you hand it over, they hand it over. Uh, so I don't think it's necessarily a problem with law enforcement. They know how it works and I think it does work. But if anybody would like to tell me different, I'd, I'd like to hear that. But the other thing that I just wanted to point out, uh, Senator Benning is, I, when things happen on the state house lawn, you know, where does that, who is that reflective upon? And I think it's reflected upon the state house and the legislature. Now the governor has his office in the state house and a lot of people think that he's here in the state house all the time, but this is the legislature's building and we welcome the governor all the time. But when it's the lawn, do we want to differentiate like whose territory it is? It's, it's everybody's, I understand, but is that something that the committee might want to clarify? The, the posture of the lawn is reflective. Is it reflective on the legislature or, or is it everybody together? And when you talked about, I'll just go back to the, and everyone on the MOU is representative from the three branches of government. That, it seems to me the same question could be asked though, if you're over on the North bank of the Winooski River, um, the same question pops up. Who is actually in charge of that area of the Capitol complex? The last thing I'd like to see happen here is that any MOU designed screws up the ability of all these agencies to be able to work with each other. And the fact is they've done a very good job of doing that. But somewhere along the way, somebody in the state house decided three parties had to be part of this MOU. I don't have any idea why that came to be, but since the statute also uh, suggests it should be looked at from time to time, and we're in the process of trying to do that, 
<laughs> I want to make sure, A, we have the right players in the conversation as signatories, and B, it doesn't screw up whatever ability all these agencies have to work with each other. Um, I guess I'm going to leave it at that for the moment. Chief Romy, I, I haven't heard from you recently. I can't imagine you're not sitting there thinking about something. I'm just thinking about when the COVID test results for my three kids are coming in this afternoon so they can re be released from quarantine and I no longer have to work from home and try to juggle uh, elementary school education uh, for them as well. Um, Senator, to your, uh, to your point about why, and, and I, I'm not sure that I can adequately defend this next statement, so take it for what it's worth. But in the informal conversations I've had with some uh, former members of the, the Senate and the House, I believe that the three, uh, the, the division, if you will, came from the staunch nature of Vermont's separation of powers idea that, um, you know, the, the sergeant at arms would not direct security functions in an executive branch building and vice versa. Um, there's also the uh, added complexity, at least in the state house, of um, the enforcement of the legislative rules and Capitol Police function as a deputy sergeant at arms to in, uh, be able to enforce those rules. Um, and I, I'm nowhere near the authority to talk about when rules trump statute, but there are a, a few cases out there and um, it's uh, those, those become some complex discussions. Um, I would just note that, uh, you know, in the last four years, we've had a really good process put together. Um, a lot of it, most of it predates me, but but the, the various parties at the table, Bill is, has not been a stranger to that planning table. Uh, we currently have a 10 page uh, uh, general public safety incident action plan drafted. Uh, Rob Shell talked earlier about uh, the plans and the documentation and we have one of those drafted it's in a shared online resource so that we kind of know the general idea of where we're going to start on incidents or, or events. Uh, there is a difference in the planned events versus the uh, incidents uh, that, that tend to pop up. Um, I would also note there's a, a fundamental difference between security and law enforcement activities. Uh, not that they don't cross over, but, um, you know, there's some limitations to where we can act in a security standpoint, and there's some limitations where state security can, there's some limitations to where they can act uh, moving into the law enforcement arena. Um, I will say that uh, despite the fact that I think we pulled it off pretty well there, the planning process for the, these last events in January was actually a deviation from the norm um, where uh, we had a lot more people at the table than we usually have for those, uh, those things. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm hopeful in the next month or so, we're going to kind of kick around some things that didn't maybe go as well as they could have uh, leading up to those, those events. Um, I would also just note that, you know, as a law enforcement officers, we, we have a duty to act. Um, and we, we've had some experiences here in the last uh, six or eight months that uh, lead us to think that we're still in for quite a, quite a ride in dealing with things that are going on out on the state house lawn. Um, with all props to Major Whitcomb, I don't think he wants uh, to own any more of it than he has to. Uh, out there because there was a there's a time period I think where uh, Chief Pete and I were out there almost every Saturday for a month and those things are continuing to to uh, uh, to develop and you know, quite honestly uh, the the parties that play in the sandbox are I mean we've gotten good at it because we've done it so much 
Um, as to the MO use itself, it incorporates by reference the Washington County Law Enforcement Mutual Aid Agreement, which um, the two state agencies that are part of that are the Capitol Police and the Vermont State Police. And that drives the deployment of resources uh, both into and out of the Capitol complex. Uh, we've been out of the complex to other law enforcement agencies, uh, not only Montpelier, but Berlin um, and Northfield just in the last year. So um, we want to continue to be part of that team. Uh, you know, Vermont is nowhere near uh, blessed with law enforcement as maybe we need to uh, accomplish some of those goals. In the, uh, in the unified command stuff, I know uh, Rob talked a little bit about it earlier, but typically what you see with that is, um, you know, unified command doesn't mean there's a group of us leading by committee. It still ends up with uh, one, typically one person out of each um, discipline making decisions for the group. And then what we usually look to when we have the state police down to assist is they bring a lot of those specialized units. So it's not um, an incident commander's job to tell the bomb squad how to go deal with a package. It's their job, it's that incident commander's job to point the bomb squad at a package and say, do your thing, um, you know, with the, the overarching incident goals in mind. So. I think as long as we, you know, continue to work uh, cooperatively as we have, I think we're going to be in a good place. I think we have a, a, a good and improving relationship with uh, Montpelier Police. Uh, as we go forward, uh, we're, we're comfortable working with them. I do think um, we're looking for some clarity on um, responses within the complex and uh, I know Chief Pete and I have had some discussions about that. Bill and I have had some discussions about that. You know, we want to know what we're responsible for so that we have an opportunity to um, be responsible for them. We don't want to get, um, you know, I, I was reading Chief Sund, the uh, recently departed uh, chief of the U.S. Capitol Police. I was reading a letter that he posed um, or that he sent out um, a couple of days ago. And, you know, I, was, I kind of feel for the guy because he was responsible for, for something and was not given those assets and tools to, to, meet, the, to meet the challenge, uh, despite him asking uh, several times and several days in advance. So, uh, you know, we'd like to have some clarity on what we're responsible to do and um, what we can depend on other agencies to do for us um, and in our place. So the state house lawn seems to be a, a central focal point for question, but Matt, I, I don't envision you having the same question about being over on the north bank of the Winooski River. Am I safe in that assumption? If, if we have to go to the north bank of the Winooski River to handle a problem and it's within our ability to do it, we'll do it. Typically that... Um, well, and it's funny you mentioned the north bank of the Winooski River. There is a, um, what is that thing called over there, Brian? It's the Pocket Park. Um, that is a, a, um, a concentration of issues in the summertime. And uh, Montpelier has uh, <laughs> gladly not figured out that that's in the Capitol Complex yet. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, if they if if we need to go over there to handle something, we will. We've handled things in every major building in the complex within the last 18 months or so. We've been to, to issues and incidents in every building. So I'm hesitant to call it a battle line, but is there some um, place in particular right now that is not clear enough? As each party looks at it, is there conflict about, we'll take the state lawn as the prime example. Um, is there something that needs to be talked about and resolved? Well, you know, Senator, you mentioned earlier when we were talking about the, um, the map and the um, 
of the complex. And I, I sent the one that we had over to Denise so she can share with you um, as, uh, as you want it. But the, um, the interesting division or the way that statute reads, um, Governor Davis Avenue that is next to the pavilion is outside of the complex as is the pit parking lot where a lot of legislators and where the Supreme court parks and where, um, uh, administrative officials park. Um, it's not that we mind going over there, but you know, if we're, if we're talking about the Capitol complex, if that's our charge in statute to assist the commissioner of buildings, and general services with the delivery of security and law enforcement within the Capitol complex, if that's what we're basing our mission set off of, um, you know, that area may need to, may need to be uh, re-looked at. As far as um, the State House lawn, you know, the MOU conveys the authority to enforce rules, um, but we have always taken direction from the commissioner about whether or not to enforce them. And we did that. The, the big thing that uh, comes to my mind was back in 2018 when we had the uh, three day, four night in or four day, three night encampment on the lawn, uh, with extinction rebellion, the decision was made not to enforce that section of rules, um, by the commissioner. And we're fine with that. We just want to understand, uh, what and when, and I, I don't know that, um, I don't know that that waiting on the call is necessarily the right thing to do. We, we had two uh, parallel incidents late winter or late fall, early winter this past year where we had confrontations between groups on the state house lawn. Uh, one of them we had planned to be there because we knew the event was coming. Um, and the other one was a, a spontaneous event and they had two extremely divergent outcomes even though it was largely the same uh the same people on both sides for each event so uh, i I, I would just bring that out uh it's not our intention and it's certainly not my desire to take on any other responsibility because we are uh we're <laughs> we're we're struggling with what we've got now but we want to be that law enforcement resource uh for uh for the area for the the complex uh as we can deliver those services senator mazza you know mr chair i think i think we're uh, treading in territory that uh, it seems to be working so well uh, i don't know why we want to get into something that's going to separate of all the years that i've been here i never heard any issues that were i think the uh, montpelier police department steps in when they're supposed to the state police come when they're supposed to the state house does what they're supposed to. And if we start separating this and this is this responsibility, we're going to get in a mess here that isn't going to work. I, if there was a problem, I'd like to solve it, but I don't even see a problem. I, I think we're trying to look at something that, that there we're trying to correct a problem that's not there. I mean, that's simple to me, but I, I don't know. Maybe that's what I'm looking at. I don't know why we want to get into that language. That's going to mess it all up because the minute we dictate he's in charge or she's in charge or they're in charge, uh, we're going to get in a mess. And I, I, boy, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Well, for some reason or other, um, they haven't been able to agree. And I'm trying to get to the bottom of that and see if we can't make that happen. Who hasn't been able to agree? I haven't heard that yet today. Uh, I have an understanding that there was an initial proposal that was um, backed up by another proposal and the parties haven't sat down and signed an agreement. And I think that's where we are right now, which is why we're having this conversation. So we need an agreement, I guess what you're saying. I don't, I, I, I hope someone steps up and says we need an agreement because I don't sense that. Maybe, maybe, what am I missing here? Who wants well, an agreement? That, that disagreement was brought to our attention and asked us to try to resolve it. And I want to make sure. To I mean, is it a good source? Is it, is it a legitimate source that brought this to you? Oh yeah, and boy, I wish they stand least, up. 
at least two of them are on the screen with us right now. So I want to make sure I get to the bottom of okay. All right. whether we've got some responsibility. Janet. Okay. Uh, maybe I can clarify just a bit, uh, Senator Maza. I think, you know, when the Capitol Police responds to an incident, they respond when they can, as far as like not leaving the state house vulnerable. So if we had two officers on, or like the incident that happened at 133, I think at the time there were three, two, two went over to 133. So we're not leaving the state house vulnerable, but my understanding is that if something happens on the lawn, then it goes out over the radio. And some police, one of the police officers can correct me if I'm wrong, but more than one person is picking up that call. So if Montpelier police is out on a call somewhere and they don't have immediate coverage, it's not their responsibility to be here first, I don't think, if there's an officer in the state house that could go out and address it. To me, that's one thing that I feel is a little bit of a, like a hole in the MOU or an understanding is that, and Jennifer, you can reply to this or not. When that call gets made, do you have a problem that if Capitol Police responds or if Montpelier is not here first? I just. No, I mean, when there's, an in, when there's an incident on the State House lawn, it's, it's my hope and um, my expectation that whoever can respond as a law enforcement entity respond as, as quickly as possible, regardless of who, it who is. they are. Yeah. Right. Is that the same? Uh, what, did you have the same idea about that in one of your, in one of the buildings for, in, in the area, in the complex, if something in the DMV is going on and we can spare a person and the Capitol Police, or I'm sorry, the Montpelier Police is not there at the, at the moment? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If there's an incident that's occurring, regardless of who is the law enforcement entity that is available at the time, we would hope that they would help us respond, case in point, we didn't have an incident, but we needed support one day in DMV, and DMV has law enforcement officers. They happened to be in the building at the time, and they were willing, and again, it wasn't an incident, but they were willing to support us in what was going on in that moment, and that was somebody had a, a gun in the, in the DMV building, and we wanted to approach that person and just let them know, hey, you know, state rules say you're not allowed to have a gun in the building. Please remove it. But when we did that, you know, we wanted to make sure that we had DMV enforcement with us as part of that conversation because, you know, you don't know anything about that person, right? And so, um, so we just felt that we 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 wanted that support in that moment, and it worked really well. But that's an example, Janet, where I don't have a particular agreement with DMV enforcement, but they are happy to help us when we ask them. And so, I just want to echo what everybody else has said here today, which is, and again, I know I'm the new kid on the block, so take, take it for what it's worth, but from the new kid on the block, um, my perspective is that it does work really, really well. Um, so I, I am, I, Janet, I, I have committed to you and I am committed to this committee that I'm happy to, to take the MOU and, and if there's areas where we need to further clarify roles and responsibilities, I am completely dedicated to doing that. At the same time, I just do want to echo everyone and say that I think we do a really good job working together. Um, and again, that's from my perspective. You know, I can't speak for everybody else that's on. I, th I think it's there because, like I said, the state police, we only call them on certain issues because they, they don't, they're not available in, in, the, in the community. Uh, they're, they're busy elsewhere. So, uh, but between the local and the capital police, the state police on special missions, they call them, but uh, they're not downtown right away. I mean, they're they're doing their thing on the interstate and everything else. So uh, I don't know. I'm just worried about trying to have too many uh, uh, policies that we're going to mess this whole thing up. So I wish I knew specifically what we're trying to address here because uh, I'm not comfortable with setting laws. If someone calls a, the Montpelier Police Department with a complaint, what, what are they supposed to do? Call the state police next? Do they call I mean, whoever gets the call, I would say, I would assume it would address the issue. I, I don't know. Well, sir, 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 if I may, like one of the confusing points for me is, is as I'm getting here and I'm trying to learn more of the more of the the processes. It's, 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 it's if something happens on the complex, is the Montpelier Police Department the first to respond, or is it going to be the Capitol Police? So is is uh so if, if we don't have the resources available, right, we're getting we're getting the priority call. So 
if the calls coming into us, the Capitol Police hears about it on the radio, and then it's like, who's going to dispatch? So that that those are th things that we have to, with the, amongst ourselves, figure out is 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 to is to what that primary is going to be. Yeah. But from my um, observation. I think that process has been working really well. And I think that, I mean, I don't wanna speak for Montpelier PD and Capitol Police, but from what I've seen, you guys work really well together. And when the call comes in, to your point, Chief Pete, it's who can respond most quickly, you know, who has the resources and who can respond most quickly to whatever type of event is occurring. So I also just wanna say thank you and acknowledge all of the law enforcement entities that do come to our aid um, at BGS. We are very appreciative of all of the support that you provide to BGS. So I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you and show my appreciation um, for all of, of the great work we all do together and for all the support that you offer to BGS. So thank you very much. I, I just wanna make sure that I, I said that today. So if I can try to keep the, uh, the Kumbaya tune going, um, I'm sensing that what we've got here is an MOU that ought to remain limited to the three parties it currently has. Um, unless Chief Pete or Major Whitcomb tell me otherwise at some point, uh, my guts are telling me that we need to make clear the MOU between BGS, Judiciary, and the Sergeant at Arms. I'm also sensing that perhaps the conversation is narrowing down considerably to a more um, thorough conversation about the state house lawn and perhaps the two side streets that run alongside it. I could be wrong on that, but that's what I'm, I'm beginning to pick up on. Um, so I'm gonna ask Denise to schedule us again next Thursday. You are all gonna be invited to come back if you choose to Major Whitcomb, Chief Pete, I don't think it's necessary for you to be involved in that conversation unless you really decide you want to be um, knowing what's happening, but you're welcome to come and join us if you want. I'm sensing that uh, Senator Mazza may also be quite correct. We don't want to screw up something that is working. And my uh, goal here is to make sure that everybody walks away with a familiar understanding of what's going to be in the next version of the MOU. With that, um, I'm gonna call it for the afternoon. I promised the committee we were gonna be out by three. And um, Robert Shell, I should also say to you, you're gonna end up having to be a signatory to the MOU that comes out. If you have any additional thoughts along the way, please don't hesitate to let me know and we'll, we'll try to accommodate that conversation the next time around. Thanks, Senator. Happy to do that. The, the court administrator, Pat Gable, ultimately will have to sign off on this. Um, but she and I work in tandem, so I'll certainly be keeping her informed. Okay. So for now, committee, hang on. Um, we're going to let all the witnesses go, and Denise will cut out of YouTube. And uh, thank you all very much for coming today, and hopefully we'll keep up the good work.